Hello children. Today we will learn the fourth chapter in science. The name of the chapter is matter. What is matter? Anything that has weight and occupies space is called matter. It can be the book what I have kept here. It has got a weight as well as it has occupied the space. So this can be a matter. Even it can be all living things including us. Even it can be plants also. Even it can be many non-living things which are around us like table, chair etc. All these actually come under matter. They have weight and they occupy space. So let us answer this. Name few things around you that have weight and take up space. Just now I mentioned plants, animals, okay, non-living things like book, chair, table, mobile phone etc. Can you think of anything that does not have weight and does not take up any space? All the things around us, they have weight and they take up space. Anything that is not having weight and they do not occupy the space, it is nothing but our feelings. It can be like uh, uh, when we get angry, our feelings, okay, even it can be when we are happy, so when we are sad, all such things. So our feelings, they don't have weight as well as they don't occupy space. Rest, everything, they have got weight as well as occupy space. What about air? Does it have weight? Air is having weight. For example, you take football. You fill the like air into the football. Now like uh, you weigh, you can uh, get to know what uh, weight it has. Now like uh, another football to which you have not filled air. Again you weigh, now you will get to know its weight. Now the football which is filled with air will be heavier compared to the football which is not filled with air. So that indicates air has weight. Does it take up space? Definitely air can occupy space. What about love or anger? Does it have weight? Does it take up space? No. The emotions expressed by us, it is not having weight. Even it doesn't occupy space. Now, let us answer this. What is matter? Anything that has weight and takes up space is called matter. Look around you. All the living things you see, such as animals, birds and plants and non-living things like balls, books, wood, water and air are made up of matter. How you define matter? Anything that has weight and takes up space. I gave you example in the beginning, in the introduction. So this book what I have kept on the table now. Okay, it has weight and it has occupied this space. Okay, even all living things including animals, birds, plants. Even non-living things like ball, book, wood, water, air. Okay, they're all made up of matter because they have weight and they have occupied they have occupied space. They have weight and they take up space. That's the reason they are called as matter. Feelings of love or sadness are not a matter. Okay, any feelings, okay, it can be love or sadness. It is it doesn't come under matter because they don't have weight, even they do not occupy space. The amount of space matter takes up is called volume. If they ask you what is volume, your answer should be the amount of space matter takes up is called volume. The space occupied by the matter. So maybe I have kept the book on this table. So what space it occupies? Okay, so this is called as volume. Now, matter is made up of tiny particles. Tiny means small particles. Matter is made up of very small particles. These particles are much smaller than a grain of sand. They are so small, they are smaller than the grain of sand. They are so small that you cannot see them. They are very tiny, we cannot see them at all. Millions and millions of these tiny particles together form a chair or a bird or you. So these tiny particles, millions in number, okay, they combine together to form a chair or a bird or even it can be us. These tiny particles are called molecules. So the tiny particles that makes up the matter, it is actually called molecules. The molecules of different substances are different from each other. The molecules of different substances are different from each other. Meaning is matter is made up of there are like made up of molecules, tiny particles called molecules. There are different kinds of matter. 
each kind of matter is having a different type of molecule. So there will be different type of molecule in different type of matter. The states of matter. Matter exists as solid, liquid or gas. So matter will exist in three states. Solid, liquid or gas. You can see a few examples for these three different states. Solid state. A car, a mobile phone, book. Okay, even it can be stone. They all come under solids. Okay, so liquid. So you can see the liquid inside these. Okay, so you can see oil inside this bottle, milk, maybe green tea. Okay, so these are actually good example for liquids. Now, gases. These are not gases. What is present inside them is gas. Inside the football, there is a gas. Okay, inside this tire, cycle tire. Okay, there is gas. Even inside this balloon also there is gas. So there are three different states. Okay, solid, liquid and other one is gases. First we will consider solids. Stone, tables and books are solids. Okay, stone, table and books. These are all solids. There are many other examples also. If you pick solids up and place them somewhere else, their shape and the space they occupy do not change. You can take, take a book, okay, keep them somewhere. Their shape as well as space will not change. Remember this. Solid, they do not change their shape, okay, unless it is altered. Otherwise, they do not change their shape. As well as the space they occupy will not change in the case of solid. Now, I have kept this particular book on the table. Unless I actually tear this particular book, it will not change its shape. And even the space it has occupied, unless I actually fold it. Otherwise, what space it has occupied, it is fixed. Okay. Solids have definite shape and volume. So, this is one important property of solid. Solids have definite shape and volume. In a solid, the molecules are packed close to each other. In a solid, we know what are molecules. The tiny particles that makes the matter are called molecules. Okay, here the matter example you consider is solid. One uh, state of matter, solids. In solids, molecules are very closely arranged. Remember this. So these are the two important properties you should know for a solid. They have definite shape. They have definite volume. At the same time, the molecules in solids are packed close to each other. Means they are arranged very closely or tightly. Okay, so next is liquids. Water, milk and juices are liquids. Okay, water, milk and juices. These are liquids. You cannot carry a liquid directly in your hand. So it is the difficult to carry a liquid directly in your hand. Okay, like you carry a solid. So we can uh, like what is it, take a stone or we can take a book and we can carry easily. But uh, like we cannot carry liquid that easily in our hand. You need a bowl or a bottle. To take the liquid, we require a bowl or a bottle. In that, we can pour that liquid and we can carry. Pour a liquid in a container such as a glass. What shape does the liquid take? It takes the shape of the glass. If you pour a liquid in the glass, you can consider here, in this particular glass, milk has been poured. Now, the milk will occupy the shape of the glass. So, liquid will always occupy the shape of in which it has been taken. So, shape of the container. Now, pour it in a bowl. Now, same uh, this particular liquid, you can pour it in a bowl. Okay, bowl, you know. Does it now take up the shape of the bowl? Yes. Now, it will occupy the shape of the bowl. Earlier, it had taken the shape of the glass. Now, it will take up the shape of the bowl. But the volume of the liquid does not change whatever the shape of the container it is poured into. See, it may change its shape, liquid, but its volume is fixed. It doesn't change. Volume means what area it occupies. So that will remain same as it is. Okay. So we learn one important property of liquid now. A liquid has a definite volume, but no definite shape. A liquid is not having a definite shape, but it has definite volume. In a liquid, the molecules are not packed as close together as they are in a solid. 
in a liquid the tiny particles what we call like molecules they're not packed as closely compared to a solid they can move around more freely the molecules in liquid can move more freely compared to solid so this is why solids can flow as the molecules are not arranged very closely in a liquid and they can move freely so that is the reason why liquids can flow looking back let us answer this you want to take a piece of cake and juice to your friend you have a plate and a glass which one will you use for the cake and which one for the juice why okay to carry cake to your friend you can use plate because solids have definite shape and they have definite volume also definite shape that's more important so very easily you can carry whereas to take juice when it use glass because we can't carry a liquid in our hand so we need to pour into some container including glass so then we can take because they do not have definite shape so this is the reason why we are taking cake in a plate as well as juice in a glass to our friend third state gases air is a gas air is an excellent example for gas the molecules in a gas are far away from each other the molecules in a gas are far away from each other you can have a comparison here you can have a comparison see these are the molecules these are tiny spherical structures a ball like structure you can consider as molecules okay the molecules in solids you can see they are closely arranged okay that's the reason they have definite shape whereas in liquids the molecules are little far away arranged compared to this it is little far away so that's why they don't have definite shape okay in gases in gases the molecules are still further far away compared to this still far away they are actually arranged solids at very close liquids is little far away in gases it is still far away okay now so they move around freely in the space available to them as the molecules in a gas are far away from each other so they move around freely in the space available to them so they can move freely in this whatever space they get a gas does not have a definite shape remember this a gas is not having a definite shape as well as it is not having definite volume okay so if you repeat solids have definite shape and definite volume whereas liquid they don't have definite shape but they have definite volume whereas gases they do not have definite shape as well as definite volume we we'll learn about them a gas does not have a definite shape okay mainly because the molecules are far away arranged they move freely in the space given to them molecules of gas can be squeezed into a small container or spread out in a big container so we can squeeze the molecules of gas in a small container as well as we can spread out in a big container when you blow air into a balloon the air is squeezed into a balloon so when you blow air into the balloon the air is squeezed means the air will occupy the space within the balloon when you let it out it spreads all over the room when you open that particular that is when you actually allow the air to go out from the balloon at that time the air will spread all over the room it now occupies a larger volume okay now it will occupy a larger volume in the room when you blow air into the balloon it will occupy the space within the balloon that is small space when you allow the air inside the balloon to go out now it will occupy the space what is present around it that is in the room okay it will occupy larger volume what this indicates a gas does not have a definite volume okay it doesn't have a definite shape as well as it doesn't contain a definite volume now so change of state so we have an activity here remove a few ice cubes from the refrigerator leave them out for some time what happens the ice melts and turns into water when you remove few ice cubes from the refrigerator that is fridge leave them out for some time you can see here okay what happens the ice melts and turns into water the ice will melt and it becomes water 
Now ask an adult to boil this water. Now you need to ask an adult means your parent or your elderly brother or sister to boil. The water will operate and escape into the air as steam. Okay, the water. So this particular ice will become water. So that water when you boil, it becomes steam. It will escape into air in the form of steam or vapor. Okay, so this here we actually saw change in the state. So let me read out those. So ice is a solid. You can see ice is solid. On heating, it becomes water, a liquid. When we heat, when we increase the temperature, ice will actually become liquid. On further heating, water changes into a gas called water vapor. So when we boil water, it's converted into steam or vapor. Thus, a solid becomes a liquid. Liquid on heating. A solid becomes a liquid on heating. A liquid becomes a gas on further heating. A liquid will become a gas on further heating. On cooling, the opposite changes takes place. When the water vapor is cooled, it changes into water. When water is cooled, further it changes into ice. Thus, matter can change from one state to another on heating or cooling. Remember, so we can change the state of matter on heating or cooling. Remember that. On heating or cooling, we can change the state of matter. Like in the previous example we had learned, so when we increase the temperature or when we take the ice cubes from the fridge and when it is kept in a bowl, it will melt. Means solid is converted into water, liquid state. Now that water when you boil, again when we increase the temperature, so what will happen? It converts into water vapor or steam. So on, on heating, we can change the states of matter. Okay, solid to liquid, liquid to gas. That is vapor or steam. So we can reverse that. So when that particular vapor is cooled, okay, when the vapor is cooled, it turns into water. Again, when it is further cooled, maybe less than zero degree Celsius in the refrigerator, when it is further cooled, it converts into ice. So that is actually conversion of liquid to solid state. So we can change the states of matter either by heating or cooling. Now we learn an activity here. To observe the change of state, materials required. Three pans are required. A cube of butter, a piece of wax, a piece of iron. Three pans, a cube of butter, a piece of wax and a piece of iron. Method. Place the cube of butter, the piece of wax and the piece of iron in the three pans. We need to take three pans. On the three pans, in one pan you place cube of butter, other one piece of wax and a piece of iron. Okay. Now, ask an adult to heat the pans. Now, you should request an adult to heat the pans. Three pans separate. On one, like on one pan you have taken butter, other pan wax, other one is piece of iron. Which of the solids melt into a liquid? You need to observe which solid will melt into a liquid. Now, cool the pans. Did the liquid change back into to solids? Now you should cool it back. Okay, so when you cool the pans, did the liquid change back to solids? We'll learn now. Butter and wax melt when you heat them in a pan. When you heat butter and wax on a pan, they melt and they become liquid. Okay, iron also melts on heating, but it has to be heated much more than butter or wax. Iron also melts, but it requires very high temperature. When it is heated to very high level, at that time it converts into liquid. Okay. Now, so this is done in a factory in a furnace. And uh, like a melting of iron can take place at a very high temperature. So it requires a special, uh, uh, a special uh, like heating device which is called furnace. In a furnace, in a factory, so when they heat, iron will melt. This cannot be done at home or in school. So melting the iron cannot be done at home or school because we cannot generate that too much heat what is required. Here you can see iron being melted in a factory. Here they are in furnace. Equipment in which things can be heated at a very high temperature. So in this activity, uh, the question was like uh, 
when we heat these that is uh, butter a cube of butter piece of wax and a piece of iron when we heat it over a pan whether they melt the answer is they melt okay butter will melt very quickly so then it will be wax then it will be iron iron requires very high temperature which can be carried in a furnace in a factory okay now there is another question here now cool the pan so did the liquids change back to solid yes so when we cool the pan again they convert back into their original state when it is cooled okay but uh, iron like again it is actually done in factory itself okay this so these are actually few important things you need to know for this activity.